Hello, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and in this video we're going to be talking about how to choose an equatorial mount, uh, what's involved in the, in the process, uh, what specs you need to look for, and then uh, what scope you've got to put on top to help you determine exactly what would be uh, the best fit for you. All right, so let's get started. So probably the most important spec uh, to look at when choosing an equatorial mount is the weight capacity of the mount, how much telescope it will hold. You don't want to get a mount that is too small for the telescope you're going to put on top of it because then you're going to have excess vibrations when you're looking at a planet at high power it's going to be shaking around and it'll never settle down so definitely go for as big of a weight capacity as you're comfortable uh, carrying around with you and for the size of the scope so for example uh, i've got four of them here this isn't by any means all of the mounts that we sell but it's a good representative sample the astroview mount here that has a weight capacity of 12 pounds Skyview Pro here is 20 pounds, 30 pounds for the Sirius, and this is one of the Atlas series. This is the Atlas Pro, it holds 44 pounds. I get this question a lot, does that include counterweights? So I have to add the counterweights into the uh, measurement for the weight spec. No, let's say the Skyview Pro mount here, it holds 20 pounds of telescope. So if you have a 16 pound, let's just say you have a 20 pound telescope, you can put that on here, and then however many counterweights you need to balance it. So don't think you need to have a 10 pound telescope and a 10 pounds of, of counterweight to balance it. So that's the most important spec, weight capacity. Find the one that fits the, uh, the size of the scope that you're going to be putting on. There's another part to the weight capacity spec that you want to keep in mind. If your goal is to just look at the night sky, look at the moon and planets, look at some deep sky objects, you can get pretty darn close to that weight capacity limit. So again on the Skyview Pro here, 20 pounds, I would be more than comfortable putting 20 pounds of telescope on this for visual use. But if you want to take astrophotos of the night sky, usually you want to have a little bit of overhead. You want to have a little bit bigger mount than you normally would need just to have it rock solid. Uh, because if you're going to be taking a very long exposure of a nebula and you're right at the weight capacity limit, there might be a little bit of excess vibration. Let's say a gust of wind comes by. Um, if you're at the limit, then it, it's never quite as stable as it could be. So if I was going to be using 20 pounds of equipment uh, or even 18, 18 to 20 pounds, I'd go with a 30 pound capacity uh, telescope here, or bigger as well, uh, just to have that little overhead to give you the, uh, the little excess uh, room to maneuver on top of it. The next thing you want to ask yourself is what do you want the mount to do? Uh, a lot of the smaller ones here are manual, or they come at least manually out of the box, so you just twist the one knob here and it'll follow along. Uh, no go-to, no motor drive included out of the box. The same thing with the Skyview Pro. You can add a simple clock drive to the basic mounts and it doesn't have a computer or a database, it just knows how fast to spin this knob. So once you've found something in the sky yourself, it will continue to track it through the sky. The starting point for a go-to system is the Skyview Pro mount. This one, you can either add a simple clock drive, like I mentioned here, or a full go-to system to retrofit this uh, to a full go-to. The larger mounts, the Sirius and the Atlas styles, uh, have go-to built in, so you don't have to worry about that later on. It comes included out of the box. And one of the last things to decide is how much into astrophotography you're going to be uh, doing. Uh, remember at the beginning I mentioned about weight capacity and having a little bit of overhead, but if you're going to be doing moon and planetary photography, you can actually get away with simple clock drives. You don't need a computer system or a, a auto guider port. But if your goal is long exposure, deep sky astrophotography, taking uh, 40 minute exposures of some nebula, you're gonna want at least an auto guider port. So it will, uh, so you can attach an auto guider and track and keep the star dead locked on the, the, the same pixel so you get nice round stars. You don't get that with the simple clock drives uh, that come with the smaller mounts. Uh, you'd have to manually guide and that's, that can be a, a, a very large pain. The go-to kit for the Skevy Pro and then built into the Sirius and the Atlases, they all have the autoguider port, so you're ready to go for long exposure deep sky uh, astrophotography. All right, so there you have it, uh, several different mounts to fit your needs, uh, depending on what they might be. Uh, so you've got small mounts just to track manually, all the way up to full go-to systems that will do astrophotography. Uh, I think we have the right mount for you, you just have to decide exactly what you want to do with it. All right, thank you very much, clear skies.